I think the philosophy is if you have fun with what you're doing, you'll be more passionate about it, and so you'll do it really, really well. I'm Eric Demain. I'm a professor of computer science at MIT. Martin Demain, Eric's father, researcher at MIT and an artist in residence. My background is more on the math and computer side. Uh, my background is more on the art side, building things with my hands, using my imagination. Well, you don't think I use my imagination? <laughs> <laughs> so we're both origami theorists. We're trying to understand the mathematics and the geometry underlying how sheets fold in general. But then we're also origami artists trying to build beautiful and intriguing sculptures out of paper. It's a better title, I think, than being an artist. It's someone who makes up theory, tries to understand theory, and combines it with art. Amusingly, when we got started in origami theory, it was considered kind of a niche recreational topic. And we were advised not to do research in origami mathematics, but we ignored that advice because we just thought it was too cool to pass up. The mathematics is still being studied. We don't quite fully understand it. In fact, we haven't mathematically proved that it exists. Another thing we find is that there's a lot of inspiration across the disciplines between mathematics and art. We'll be trying to build an artistic sculpture and that will lead to a new mathematical problem about whether that sculpture exists or how can we generalize it mathematically. And then when we get some new mathematical result, we can try to turn that into a sculpture. So how can we make it into something that everyone can appreciate, not just on a screen, but in a, as a physical object. We don't always know ahead of time what we're making. Sometimes we'll take turns working on a sculpture. I'll add a couple of pieces, then Eric will add a couple more, and it just kind of grows spontaneously in a very positive way. In the same way that we improvise with each other, I think we're also kind of improvising with the material because it has its own mind of what it wants to do. We might have two or three projects changing every hour, every day, so that if we get stuck on one, we move on to another, and not everything gets finished or solved, but we have lots of interesting results, whether it be artistic or mathematical. Communication is just super important between people when they work together, and ours is ideal. We've managed to keep it pure and honest and humorous. We've written hundreds of papers together and made hundreds of sculptures together, so it's, it's a lot of fun. We've known each other a long time. <laughs> Eric is definitely my best friend. Everything is totally shared. It's an amazing trust that we have. A big part of our process is brainstorming. We'll spend actually most of our time thinking about what the piece should be and what should be on it, what we're trying to make with a given project. It's exciting. You're like a little kid with uh, building blocks, kind of seeing what's going to turn out. And you make adjustments along the way. Sometimes you tear it apart and start all over again. We start with designing what we want on the sheet of paper itself. Then we score it, then we fold it, then we do that several times to get a bunch of pieces, and then we assemble them into a 3D sculpture. But right. once we go into 3D, it's pretty improvised, and we don't really know what we're going to get. So we use technology to design these sculptures, not completely, but mostly. But when it comes to actually producing or putting them together, our philosophy is that it has to be done by hand. One idea I had is uh, to take some old problems and overlap these sheets, print them like we did on the destructor model. Oh, but so maybe dissection could be the theme that we go for. We could, we could design a bunch of math problems around dissection. We titled this piece Solve Me as a reference to Alice in Wonderland, you know, eat me, drink me, uh, solve me. All the sculptures that we make, if you study them, you can kind of count how many pieces make up the sculpture? This one's been designed in a way that it's impossible to figure out. You're just gonna get lost in the patterns of twisting and weaving everything through each other. Usually when we make our curved crease sculpture, we just wanna drive the curiosity into the viewer, like, oh, how is that made? Is that is that paper? What Like, what's going on there? Because it's just not 
a way that people have normally seen paper be manipulated. We really wanted to get a lot of mathematics, but also mathematical research problems that we think about hidden inside the text here that you can try to solve. And there's even a couple of unsolved problems, and those are the ones that we love to work on, ones that haven't been solved yet. Mathematics is always at this frontier between things we know how to solve and things we don't know how to solve. So there are actually two different mathematical fonts that we designed in past years incorporated into the sculpture. This font on the top is called the Tetris font. Each letter is made out of the seven Tetris pieces that you know and love. This bottom font is called the two-piece dissection font, and it has the property that each of these letters can be divided up into two sets that can be rearranged to form a six by six square. We thought it would be cool to lay out the problems themselves in a Tetris layout. So if you look at the, these bold outlines, they are Tetris pieces. Uh, for me, the th most surprising part of this one is that the way the print went on the paper help make the piece shape itself. It needed to be very complex, kind of blurring the pieces together so that you couldn't easily tell them apart. I couldn't have imagined making something like this. When we started exploring paper folding, I don't think we even imagined these kinds of geometries existed. We learned a lot from building the sculpture. We learned from everything we do. And this has been a fun process. Yeah, we came up with new mathematical puzzles, new mathematical problems that we hadn't thought about before and might uh, direct our research in the future. I think what's, what makes mathematics so exciting is that there's so much we don't know that, that anyone could still go and discover. I feel a sense of accomplishment with this piece. Yeah, it definitely makes me wonder about the next one. Uh, looks great.